Hello everyone, welcome to a quick lesson on two techniques needed for reading. Today's lesson will be on skimming and scanning. What makes it easy for us to handle comprehension passages is mastering the art of skimming and scanning. You will need to use these techniques when you read through passages. Not only will these techniques help you take out information from the passages with ease when answering questions that are based on comprehension passages, but they will also help you read through passages quickly. When you read, you don't have to read everything with the same amount of care and attention. Sometimes you need to be able to read a text very quickly. We do this when we look up for a word in the dictionary. When we look up a word in the dictionary, we call it scanning through a dictionary. Scanning is one type of fast reading. Skimming is another type of fast reading. You might use skimming to look through a text quickly to get the gist, that means the general idea. So if you want to know what's going on in the news, you might skim through a newspaper or a news website. You wouldn't have detail, but you would find out the main points. Skimming and scanning are both quick reading techniques, but they have different purposes. You might use scanning to look up a word in a dictionary or index, find an address or a phone number in a directory, check what time your program is on television, look up details or prices in a catalogue, pick out the website you want from options on a Google search. You might use skimming to see what's in the news in a paper or on a website. Browse through a book to see if you want to read it. Look through the television guide to see what's on one evening. Flick through a catalogue to see what's on offer. Look through the options given on a Google search to see what sites it suggests. How do you skim read? When you use the skimming technique, you don't read the whole text word for word. You would use as many clues as possible to give you some background information. There might be pictures or images related to the topic or an eye-catching title. Let your eyes skim over the surface of the text and look out for words, keywords, while thinking about any clues you found about the subject. How do you scan a text? You can use the scanning technique to look up a phone number, read through the small ads in a newspaper, or for browsing television schedules, timetables, lists, catalogues, or web pages for information. For these tasks, you don't need to read or understand every word. Scanning is also useful when you don't have time to read every word. This could be when you're studying or looking for specific information from a book or article and need to find it quickly. Let's look at this newspaper article. You can use both techniques to understand what the text is about. You can skim to find out what it is all about. Headings and pictures can help you do this. Or you can scan to look for important information. Look for keywords or numbers to help you do this. Now let's look at a comprehension passage from your English pupils book. Let's turn to page 54, unit 5, activity 9. Let's read the passage together. Anyone who prepares for an exam will have to plan and study according to a timetable. What is the best time of the day to study? For some, it is the daytime and for some others, it's at night. However, there are some students who struggle to find a suitable time to study due to many reasons. After a good night's sleep, people tend to have more energy and become more active during the day. Since most of the people are contactable during the day, it is easy to communicate with teachers, friends and others to clarify any questions that you may have. Furthermore, the natural light you get during the day 
is better than the artificial light that you use at night. On the other hand, studying during the night can also be beneficial. During the night, the environment is very quiet. This creates a setting to study peacefully. Hence, there are fewer distractions than the daytime. And when you study during the night, your creativity will increase and this in turn will help you to understand theories and concepts easily. Your analyzing ability also will be greater. However, the best time to study depends on an individual's personality, nature of the exam, time management, the natural sleep cycle of the person, the resources the person has, etc. Whatever the time you choose to study, it is important to be methodical. First, set a target and keep on recalling your target. Next, give yourself enough time to study and organize your study space. It will also be advantageous to work according to a timetable. Use flowcharts and diagrams to concentrate on daily lessons, practice past question papers, discuss your answers with others, get necessary clar clarifications from teachers, organize study groups and associate with friends who have the spirit to study. You should not forget to take regular breaks, eat nutritious food, drink plenty of water and spend time with your family too. Above all, be positive and have faith in yourself. Then no one can stop you from achieving your target. Wow, that text was great. Especially for all of you as you are all studying for a big exam. When you look at the questions, you can use skimming and scanning to find your answers with ease. Let's look at the questions. A. Complete the table given below on advantages of studying during daytime and night. Let's look at the table that they have given and fill it out with appropriate answers. To do this, let's scan the article for the advantages of studying during the daytime. Even though the term advantages is not found in the text, my eyes rest on the second paragraph. I can then quickly skim through the paragraph to see if I can take out any points as my answers. I then write them down in the table. When listing out disadvantages, my eyes immediately scan the article and notice the phrase, on the other hand, in the third paragraph. In fact, the paragraph starts by stating that studying during the nighttime can be beneficial. This is another word for advantageous. After I skim through the third paragraph, I write down my disadvantages with confidence. Next, there are some questions that require direct but short answers. Let's look at questions B. Let's look at the first question. What are the steps that you have to follow when studying? After skimming through the last paragraph, I was able to find some points for this answer. It tells us to be methodical. It also advises us to study and organize our study space. It also states that it would be advantageous to work according to a timetable. Use flowcharts and diagrams to concentrate on daily lessons. Practice past paper questions. Discuss answers with others get clarifications with teachers, organize study groups and associate with friends who have the spirit to study. Questions B and C do not require you to skim and scan. You may use your own discretion. Let's do them together anyway. What time of the day do you study? I love to study during the night when everyone is asleep. Give a suitable title to the article. Maybe we can call this when and how to study for an exam. Well, I hope you have some understanding of skimming and scanning. There are such wonderful techniques that can help you when reading a text. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and if you did, find this lesson useful 
please subscribe to our channel. Have a great day.